Hello everybody, welcome to today's video. It's a continuation in the series on Jane Eyre and today we're going to be having a look at the use of language in the novel. Everything I go through in this video comes from Mr. Bruff's Guide to Jane Eyre written by Kerry Lewis and now available in paperback on Amazon.co.uk so do pick up a copy. So what I want to talk about in this video is the symbolism of literature. Now, Bronte deliberately uses symbolism, where something represents something else, when referring to literature within the novel. And I'm going to give you some examples in this video. So, one example is that at Gateshead, the young Jane is reading Buick's History of Birds. And the reference to birds in the title symbolizes or represents Jane's wish to leave the nest and escape the tyrannies of her family. And this is supported by Bronte's use of pathetic fallacy, where the weather or environment reflects a character's feelings. So we've got the sea fowl that lives in remote Norway on solitary rocks. And, and just like that, Jane feels isolated and lonely. Uh, Norway is a cold country in the north, and Bronte lists additional countries in the vast sweep of the Arctic zone to build her feelings of desolation and unhappiness. In the extract from Buick, there are multiple images of coldness and death. We see frost and snow, firm fields of ice, the accumulation of centuries of winters, extreme cold. And this is a semantic field, a, a group of thematically linked words, which emphasise Jane's position as an orphan, as it's a metaphor for how she's frozen out of the Reed family. However, the references to other countries in the extract introduce the idea of life beyond Gateshead, anticipating her departure from Lowood at the end of the Gateshead chapters. The pictures in Buick's book also have a positive effect on Jane because they stimulate her imagination. She uses each picture to create a story that is, quote, profoundly interesting. And this serves as a coping mechanism for the harsh, cold realities of her life at Gateshead. It also stimulates a love of learning that promises well for her future progress at Lowood and subsequent career as a governess and teacher. Now, after the Red Room incident, Bessie gives the recuperating Jane a copy of Gulliver's Travels to read. And this is a book written by Jonathan Swift, the story of Gulliver, who travels to faraway lands where he's treated as an outsider. And of course, the story mirrors Jane's feelings of being an outsider at Gateshead and foreshadows her future travels to Lowood, Thornfield, Moorhouse and Fern Dean. Jane, like Gulliver, will be an outsider in the future as well as the present. At Thornfield, for example, she will be called a fairy, uh, an elf, and other words from the supernatural world which emphasise her difference. Now, Bessie reads to the children from Pamela. Pamela, or Virtue Rewarded by Samuel Richardson, is about a young servant girl whose master tries to seduce her. It was considered a daring novel in its time, a bit risque, and Pamela resists every attempt at seduction until her master finally proposes marriage. And this obviously has parallels with the Thornfield chapters with Mr Rochester being an older man who tries to make Jane his mistress. Some of the events in Pamela therefore foreshadow those in Jane Eyre, and perhaps Jane had the novel in the back of her mind when she first met Mr Rochester at Thornfield. Bessie also reads to the children from Henry Earl of Moreland, a novel by Henry Brook. The novel's hero or protagonist often fights against repression like Jane. Now, because of this, and this is quite interesting, Perhaps Bronte invites us to think of him as a role model for Jane in her struggles against the odds. Bronte might be suggesting that there will be many obstacles in Jane's life that she'll need to overcome. When Jane first meets Helen at Lowood School, Helen is reading Rasselas, uh, which is an essay by Samuel Johnson, which argues that life is to be endured rather than enjoyed. It suggests that happiness is often unobtainable. And Bronte might be associating Helen with the essay because she's being persecuted by the bullying Miss Scatchard. Uh, of course, Bronte might additionally be hinting at the problems with Helen's health that will result in her death. And finally, 
the author might be suggesting that Rasselas is a source of comfort for Helen. Although she will never live to experience earthly happiness, she can hope for spiritual happiness in the afterlife. Some of the other symbolism in the novel uh, includes the symbolism of music and art, and that's covered in the revision guide, so make sure you pick up a copy. If you found this video useful, if you want more Jane Eyre videos, please do give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel.